Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today. So I've been really looking forward to filming today's vlog because I'm going to be talking all about my five favourite woven dress sewing patterns for summer. And when I started my five favourite series, I've done a few five favourite videos now and I'll put links down below in case you fancy checking the other ones out. When I started my series, it was, um, we're heading into winter and so it didn't seem like the right time to do a um, sewing patterns for summer vlog at that point. But I really look forward to this time coming round. Now the sun is shining today, it, we're in spring and I think people are starting to think about summer sewing. And so I'm really looking forward to sharing my sewing patterns for summer for woven dresses because it's one of my favourite things to sew. I absolutely love sewing um, with woven fabric and I love wearing a woven dress in summer too. And I love all the different options. There's such a um, broad range of different dress types for woven fabrics for summer. Um, some are sort of loose and billowy and flowy and others are more fitted. And I've got a range of patterns I've picked out that I can't wait to share with you the patterns and my versions. I had a really tough time deciding actually because I have got some lovely patterns of summer dresses. So I had a really tough time narrowing it down to my five favourite ones. But I'm really happy with what I've picked and I can't wait to share them with you. So I usually start my vlogs with what I'm wearing and today I'm actually wearing one of my versions of one of my favourite um, woven dress patterns for summer. And it's this pattern here. It's the fringe dress and blouse pattern by Chalk and Notch. It's a really lovely pattern um, and um, it has a really nice variations too. So I'll show you the line drawings to give you an overview of what it looks like. So it's, it's, it comes with a blouse option, which is basically a shorter sort of skirt option and a longer skirt option to make it into a dress. And it's got two main versions. So version one, um, view A, is a button up bodice and it's got these lovely elbow sleeves with sleeve tabs, which is what I'm wearing here. So you can see the sort of sleeve is um, sort of pulled up here and, and a secure with a little button, which I think is a really nice feature. And then it's got a gathered skirt and it's fairly loose around the waist. It's not designed to be fitted, but there are waist ties if you want to pull it in and cinch in your waist. And I find for me, it just sits just above my waist. It's almost somewhere between empire and a waistline here. And then view B is here. It's got a notched um, bodice, which I think is a really pretty feature. And then sort of more standard sleeve tabs. And again, the um, gathered skirt. And as you can see, um, one really nice thing about the um, fringe dress is that the, the, the basic pattern includes two different bust sizes, an AB cup size and a CD cup size, which I think is great. Oh, and it also has pockets, which is always a great um, feature of any pattern. Um, and it comes in sizes zero to 24. And size zero has a full bust of 32 inches, a waist of 25 inches and a hips of 35 inches. And then it goes up to size 24, which has a full bust of, um, well, the full bust for the CD cup is 52 inches um, or 50 for the um, AB cup. And then a waist of 43 inches and hips of 53 inches. So there's quite a good size range there. And the finished garment uh, measurements, they're quite, it's designed to be fairly loose fitting. So for the size um, zero, the actual full bust is um, 35 inches finished. The waist is 29 inches and the hips are 47 inches. There's plenty of ease for this pattern. So it's designed to be quite loose and summery. But it's a lovely pattern. The instructions are fantastic. Um, I really um, enjoyed working my way through. It's actually the only chalk and notch pattern I've made. Um, but I really would like to try some other ones because I found the instructions so good and I really like the style of this dress. One thing that is worth noting, because there are a few different variations to the pattern and quite a lot of different sizes with the two bust sizes built in, the PDF um, file is absolutely huge, um, but you can um, use the layers option um, when you go into Adobe. So you can just print out the size you need, or the if you need to grade between sizes, just print out the particular sizes you need. Um, which makes it much better because I think if you didn't do that you'd end up using a lot of paper printing out all the different variations with all the different sizes so that's quite a handy feature. Um, it's designed as an intermediate pattern I guess there are a few sort of technical bits um, like doing the button placket mainly um, and there are a few fiddly bits but the instructions are so good that I think it'll be fine for a confident beginner because it really holds your hand through the process and the pictures and all the wording is really really clear. I'll put up a picture of the version I'm wearing today. And today, because it's a spring day, it's not full summer yet, and it's a, there's a bit of a chill in the air, I'm wearing it with leggings, but I think it looks quite nice with leggings as well. So I think this dress works quite well um, for spring. Um, and I made the size zero, um, which is um, my bust measurement, but the waist and hips are a little bit smaller than my waist and hips. But because, as I mentioned, the finished garment measurements show there's plenty of ease, it's just fine and there's plenty of room for me to get it on and off over my head. Um, you don't need to undo the buttons, it just slips on and off. 
Um, and actually, it's not too fabric hungry, this dress. Um, I think I made this with two meters of fabric. Um, this was a wider fabric, um, I think maybe 150 centimeters wide, and it fit fine into two meters of fabric. Um, the sleeves do take up a bit of space, these, um, these kind of tabbed elbow sleeves, that's quite a big pattern piece, but it did fit into two meters, which I thought was quite good. And I made my version here in this beautiful double gauze fabric by Atelier Brunette. It's got these lovely little um, embroidered on um, spots in silver. Um, and I think it's a really lovely, pretty fabric and really nice for summer because it's kind of um, cool and breezy. Um, and it still adds a little bit of structure to the dress. But the pattern recommends a range of fabrics, which um, it recommends light to medium weight woven fabrics with nice drape. So it recommends rayon chalet, cotton lawn, linen or double gauze. So this is a double gauze version, but I think it would look lovely in a viscose or a rayon too, because I think that'd be really lovely and swishy. And one other feature actually I didn't mention, which I really like as well, is, um, which doesn't show, it's not too clear in the pattern, is it's got a lovely dipped hem to the bottom of the dress, which is a bit different as well. Um, so I'll try and put up a picture which shows off the dipped hem nicely, but I think that's a lovely feature too. One other um, great point to note about the fringe dress pattern is that Talk and Notch have put together an article on their website talking all about how to make adjustments to the fringe dress and there are loads of different adjustments included in that article including some more straightforward ones like lengthen the bodice and the skirt but there's also details of how to make a full bust adjustment, how to move the um, bust point and the bust dart, um, how to make a full bicep adjustment so it's really worth checking out if you do have any um, fitting issues because they cover loads of different areas and it's all written really clearly again and one other thing that's really cool about the fringe dress is there's also a mini fringe dress available and I believe that's for children um, between age 2 and 12 years but it's really cute it is just a little mini version of the standard fringe dress um, and I thought that would be really lovely um, to make for a little one and quite a good size range too I'm really tempted to get that one for my daughter and make her version because it's such a lovely pattern but that's most of what I have to say about the fringe dress pattern so let me show you my versions so the version I'm wearing today um, is the first version I made in this lovely um, Atelier Brunette double gauze and it's a really um, cool and breezy version to wear and it was quite nice to work with as well because the double gauze has a little bit of structure to it um, but I would mention with double gauze it can stretch out a little bit so it's always worth stay stitching bits like necklines before you start to sew them to avoid any stretching out. And I made one more version in double gauze actually because I love this one so much and I've got loads of wear out of it. I made a second version. And this is, I think, a really lovely summery fabric. Um, this fabric I got from Guthrie Garney a while ago. Um, I don't think it's available anymore now, but I think I might have seen it on the Minerva website, so if I can find it still, I'll put a link down below. But it's beautiful. Um, it's got um, lovely pink flowers, and it's got these sort of goldy bits too. And then I chose these sort of gold fun buttons to go with it, and little gold buttons again with the sleeve tabs. So I made the version A again with this one, a slightly raised waistline um, with the um, buttons. I didn't um, lengthen the bodice in this at all. I quite like how it sits a bit higher. Um, yeah, and then it's got the dipped hem, which you can see at the bottom there. Um, and I'll put a picture of me wearing this one too. I love this one. It makes me feel really summery and it's perfect for wearing at the beach or somewhere else where you want to keep really cool, but also covered up on the shoulders. So that's my second version. I then had a bit of fun hacking the fringe dress for my third version which I made in this lovely um, chambray fabric. It's a Robert Kaufman chambray. It's called Neon Neppy and it's got these little neon flex in it and I really love this fabric. Um, so this is my third version. For this one, I lengthened the bodice um, a little bit to bring it more to my natural waist and then added waist ties just so I got a more fitted look and I'll put up a picture so you can see how that looks. So it's a lot more fitted than my two, um, my two first versions. I still kept the sleeve tab feature because I love that and I had a bit of fun with um, pink thread so I added pink buttonholes and sort of pink top stitching around the placket too. And then for this version, I decided to make a straight hem. So I um, oh yeah, straightened out the hem just to keep it a bit more sharp and make it more of a kind of classic shirt dress, as you'll see from the picture. And I'm really happy with how that one turned out. Um, I love wearing this dress. Oh, and I had a bit of fun with the buttons on this one too and went for these yellow sparkly buttons, which I think are quite cool. So that's my third version of the fringe dress. And I did one more hack, because I think it's a great hackable pattern, and I hacked it into a blouse, but a different blouse to the fringe dress pattern blouse. So I started with the same top bit, um, and again I used a lovely double gauze, a Telly brunette one, and this is a cream one with gold um, embroidered spots here. And then instead of um, the gathered um, skirt that the or gathered sort of blouse bottom like the fringe dress pattern has, I made it into more of a sort of, of straight um, blouse pattern that fit onto the top piece, and it's got a little dip again. So this is the kind of top I'd wear with jeans, and it's really nice and casual and comfy. Um, and I'll put a picture of me wearing that one. 
And I actually did a blog post um, on my blog talking about how I hacked the fringe dress to make this, this type of blouse and how I made these pattern pieces for the bottom bit. Um, I'll put a link down to that blog post below in case you fancy having a look and having a go at a hack like this one. But those are my fringe dresses. I adore the pattern. It's so fun to sew with the great instructions. It's really comfy and relaxed to wear. It definitely had to be on my top five um, woven dress patterns for summer list. My second favourite woven dress sewing pattern for summer um, has a bit of a vintage vibe to it and I think it's a lovely pattern and one you can dress up and down and it's this pattern here, it's the penny dress by Sew Over It. So it's, yeah, as I said, it's a vintage style pattern with a sort of 1950s tea dress feel to it and it's got some lovely features and I'll show you the line drawing so you can see them. So it's a sleeveless bodice that's buttoned down and it's got a flat collar, so it hasn't got a collar stand, and it's got an elasticated waist. So it's a great um, sort of first shirt dress to try because it's got a few of the shirt details, like a collar, but it's a flat collar, like I say, without a stand, so it's a little bit easier to put in. And then it's got the buttons, but it's got an elasticated waist, so it doesn't, the fit is not too critical because the elastic pulls in to cinch it to the waist. And it's got a lovely um, little ruched shoulder detail with a little shoulder tab almost here. Um, so it's a great one for a first go at making a dress with a collar and a button placket. It was actually my first time when I made this making a button and um, button placket and collar. Um, and the instructions do take you through it well. Um, I wouldn't say it's a, like a first time beginner pattern because it has got those details, but it's a great one if you're wanting to up your skills. Um, and it's got a lovely shape to it. The skirt is a half circle, so it's really swishy. Um, and yeah, really, and can be really cool and breezy in the summer, but also covers you up a little bit. So I like that too. The size range isn't the best on this pattern. It's not the widest size range. Um, it goes from a size eight, which is bust 33, waist 26, hips 36, which is kind of bang on my size sizing, up to a size 20, which is bust 45, waist 38 and hips 48. So that's the size range. And it's designed to be made in lightweight woven fabrics with drape. Um, they recommend rayon, crepe or georgette, or lightweight cotton such as lawn and voile, or linen or seersucker. And it's quite a fabric hungry dress because of the um, half circle skirt. You need a, a, quite a wide fabric and also quite a lot of fabric to accommodate that. Um, I think I um, ordered the amount of fabric it recommends, which is um, three and a half meters. Oh yeah, it says your fabric has to be 55 inches wide to accommodate the skirt. Um, but I did use a little bit less than that. I don't think I'd have needed really more than three meters. And I'll show you my versions. So my first version is this one here. I made it in this lovely cotton voile, or voile, I never know which way to say that, um, fabric. And it came from Minerva. And it was really reasonably priced because um, it's quite a fabric hungry pattern. And also because it was my first time making it, I didn't want to spend too much money on a fabric and because I was worried I might spoil it. But actually it came out much better than I expected. And I did find the instructions really good. Um, and so this is it, it's this lovely, um, it's a cotton voile, um, voile, and it's in this dark green with little ditzy floral print on it. And then it went for little pink buttons, which I thought were quite pretty and kind of blended in nicely. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just really lovely and breezy. I hadn't um, worked with voile before and I wasn't sure what it would be like, but it is really lightweight and it's a little bit sheer, but I don't find I need to wear a um, slip underneath because it's quite a dark colour. Um, but it was really nice to work with because it's got a bit of the structure of cotton. So I think um, if you were kind of a beginner and working on your first go, putting in a collar and a placket, I definitely recommend choosing like a cotton type fabric rather than going for something more drapey and slippery like a rayon. Although I have seen penny dresses in a rayon and it is lovely. So if you're more confident sewist, I think it would look lovely in a rayon and be really swishy. But yeah, this is my first version. I didn't make any adjustments to the pattern. I made the straight size eight, but the only thing I did do was to length shorten the skirt quite a lot. I think it's designed to be more of a midi length and I didn't, don't find that suits me very well. So I shortened it, but I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see how the length is. Um, and yeah, I really love wearing this one. I often just wear it casually with a pair of sandals, but I think it would be lovely um, dressed up with a pair of, sort of heels too, um, if you're going to like a garden party or something. I think it'd be lovely for that too. And one other thing to mention about this one is, because the skirt is a um, cut sort of partly on the bias, because it's like a, um, a half circle skirt, so it's cut on, on a different grain, I guess, around the grain. Um, it's definitely worth leaving it to hang for a few days after you have um, made it, before you hem it, because I did, did find the hem did drop a little bit differently in different places because of the different grain that's cut around the half circle. So I definitely recommend that if you're making this one. But it's a lovely sew, and that's my first version, a cotton voile, lovely and lightweight and breezy for summer. 
The only other um, area I found a little bit tricky was around the finishing of the armhole, and I didn't find it that easy to finish it um, according to the instructions, so I had to go back and do a bit of extra overlocking there, just to make sure um, it was nice and secure. And that's the only, only minor issue I found with the pattern, just the finishing of the armhole. It's definitely a little area to look at when you're finishing it to make sure that all the loose ends are caught and it won't fray there at all. Um, my second version, I liked my first version so much and I've got so much wear out of it, that I went back and hoarded um, the same fabric in a different colourway. So again, it's a cotton voil and this one is a kind of really summery, lovely pink colour. And I went with little yellow buttons for a little pop of colour on this one. Um, and yeah, it was just a really enjoyable sew, so I enjoyed sewing it twice. And I love wearing this one in summer too. Again, it's got the lovely floaty skirt. And I would really like to make a version in a, a viscose at some point. Um, that's kind of on my list of things to do at some point in the future, because I think it would just be so lovely and swishy. But yeah, it's a really pretty pattern. That's the sew over it um, penny dress. Um, a great one for um, increasing your skill level with the flat collar. It's a good start to try a collar and some lovely little details. You can see here a little bit of the ruching across the sleeves too, which is lovely. So that's the penny dress by Sew Over It. Oh, and I also wanted to mention, um, in terms of extra resources for sewing the penny, there is an um, online tutorial for sewing the placket, which I think is great, particularly if you're fairly new to sewing plackets. I'll include a link below to that tutorial because I thought that looked really clear. And there's also a hack that Sew Over It have made online for turning the penny into a tie, um, a tie um, at the waist blouse, which looks really lovely and something I'd definitely be interested in trying to. And I'll include a link to that too, so it's a lovely way to hack the penny into a blouse. So you have all the lovely little details at like the sleeveless with the ruching in a little blouse shape. And I guess it means then you'd be able to make a kind of penny inspired garment without needing all the extra fabric for the skirts. So my third um, favourite woven dress pattern for summer is my ultimate um, go-to for keeping cool in a really hot weather pattern. Um, and when we had a heat wave last year in the UK, this was the dress I reached for. And I really wished I had more than one version because I thought it was the perfect dress for keeping you cool and feeling breezy when the weather's really hot. And it's this pattern here. It's the um, Closet Court Charlie Kaftan. And it's a lovely pattern and I always think with closet core they give you lots of options so you get lots of um, different variations for your money which I think is great and I'll show you the options for this Charlie Kaftan. So you can see there are three main options. View A is kind of an architectural style kaftan. It's a shorter length um, just around the knee length. Um, all versions have this lovely deep V here at the front and it's got a little um, sort of um, panelled bit piece here and then pleats underneath, so it's yeah, quite an architectural style. Um, I think it would look great in a linen or something like that, a bit more of a crisp fabric. View and B and View C are similar in terms of the bodice here, as so they've both got this deep V and this little panel here, and underneath it's ruched, which is a lovely detail. And then View, um, view B is kind of a knee length, and then View C is your kind of maxi, drink, ma maxi dress sort of style dress with waist ties at the back to cinch it in. It's almost empire line, I'd say. It's slightly above your natural waist where it's pulled in. And yeah, it's really cool and breezy and long. Um, so yeah, there are a few different options. Oh, and there's also two sleeve um, options. It's a grown on sleeve. And there's one really loose, um, deep sleeve um, variation, which is great for cool, keeping you cool on a hot day. And then there's one slightly higher sleeve to give a little bit more coverage. So that's really useful too. But some lovely options. And um, Closet Core are great for their size range. I've got the um, paper pattern, which comes in um, size zero to 20. And size zero is for bust 31 inches, waist 24 inches, hips 33 inches. And it goes up to size 20, which is bust 46 inches, waist 39 inches, hips 48 inches. But Closet Core have also released a PDF version um, for a larger size range with a D cup um, bust. And that goes up to um, weight bust 58 inches, waist 51 inches and hips 61 inches. So it's a really big size range on this pattern, which is really great. So the pattern is designed for light to medium weight woven fabrics, so I guess summery fabrics, including linen, chambray, tensile, rayon chalet, um, crepe de chine, chiffon, silk. Um, and um, I think, yeah, I think the, the fabric you choose will probably depend on which version you went for. Um, with this architectural um, style with the pleats, I think it would look lovely in a slightly more crisp fabric. Whereas um, this um, long floaty version, I think would be perfect in a silk or a rayon. Um, and I made my version in a viscose fabric and I'll show you it now. So this is my version here, which I made in this really gorgeous viscose from Lamazi Fabrics, which I got a while ago. I don't think it's in stock um, still. Oh, and I forgot it has pockets as well, this dress. I just re remember they're there. Um, and I made the um, version B. So I made it with this um, little um, placard here with a gathering underneath. And it's got this deep V. 
And I made the larger um, sleeve, the deeper sleeve, which I love for summer because it's so um, relaxed and breezy. Um, and then I added um, the waist ties from View C on just to bring it in at the just to bring it in just above my waist. Um, and I usually tie them quite loosely, so it's still quite breezy. But yeah, I made a the slightly shorter version. It does take quite a lot of fabric this dress because the pattern pieces are quite wide with the grown on sleeves. So yeah, I wanted to, but I wanted to make a knee length version because I don't really have that much use in my wardrobe for long floaty dresses just because I'm with the kids mostly. Um, but yeah, I really um, enjoyed sewing it, but I did find it quite a fiddly sew and particularly um, this little panel here. And Closet Core have actually got a online tutorial about how to um, put this panel in because it is very fiddly. So although they say um, the dress is um, two out of five in terms of difficulty, I would say it is quite a fiddly one. And, and yeah, particularly if you choose a drapier fabric like this, that was quite tricky to get that in neatly. Um, but it's a lovely dress. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. I can't wait to make another version and I'm currently on the lookout for some more um, lightweight fabric, like another viscose type fabric, so I can make another version this year because I really would like another one of these in the wardrobe because it's perfect for just floating around on a hot day. It covers you up still, which I really like, and I think it'll be perfect for on the beach too as a cover up. So it's a lovely pattern. In terms of sizing, I made the size 2, um, which is bust 32 waist 25 and hips 34 inches and I am bust 32 waist 26 and hips 36 so my bust fit size 2 and my waist and hips are slightly larger but I actually found the size 2 came up really roomy because there is loads of ease built into this one is because it's designed to be loose and billowy so I would be tempted actually if I made another version to size down one size because there is quite a lot of fabric there um, but I do, it is nice and billowy and loose for summer though, so it's great from that perspective. But it's a lovely pattern. As I said, it is a bit of a fiddly sew, particularly around the, the, the deep V neckline and around the little bodice panel here. So I think if you were um, sort, of start, a sort of fairly new sewist, you might want to start having a go of it, maybe having a go of this style in a more of a um, well-behaved fabric like a cotton or a linen. Um, but if you're feeling a bit more confident and wanting a bit more of a challenge, then this lovely drapey version in a um, drapey fabric is just so nice for summer. But that's the Charlie Kaftan by Closet Core Patterns, my third favourite woven dress pattern for summer. So for my fourth favourite woven dress sewing pattern for summer, I've chosen a strappy number because I thought it's not really summer without a strappy sundress. And I chose this pattern here. It's an absolutely lovely pattern. It is the Ariana Woven Dress by Stylark. So it's a woven dress and top version too, but I'm going to be talking about the dress version, which has some really lovely details. So it's a strappy, um, strappy dress, as I said, with these little straps. It's got a princess seam bodice and a lovely sort of um, a sort of curved um, top bit here. It's got a button down placket all the way down the skirt, a gathered skirt and patch pockets. And one of my favourite features about this dress pattern is it's got a sheared back to the bodice. Um, which when I was looking for a kind of pattern along these lines it really appealed to me because I thought it would make it really comfy because it wouldn't be tight and restrictive fitting but it would be nicely um, elastic and um, relaxed to wear and I have found that to be the case so I really love that shearing detail all down the back of the bodice. Um, so this, um, this, dress, this is a dress by Stylark, it's the only Stylark pattern I've made and um, it recommends for fabrics linen, cotton and crepe um, I think um, a, a sort of stable, lightweight woven fabric is great for this one, just because um, it means the sort of princess seams are held in place nicely. There isn't too much dragging or pulling for a more drapey fabric. Um, and it's a funny pattern because it only gives you the finished garment measurements. It doesn't give you the um, your, what we recommend for your measurements. But the finished garment measurements, um, it comes from a size 4 to a size 30. And the size 4 um, is a bust of 30 and 3 eighths inches waist of 25 and 5 8 inches and a hip of 47 and a quarter inches and it goes up to size 30 which is a bust of 58 and a quarter inches waist of 53 and a half inches and hip of 75 and a quarter inches so it's quite a nice wide uh, measurement range for this pattern so this is my first and only pattern I've made by Stylark I really like their designs but I have found and I think this is quite a common finding from people that their instructions are very minimal so I wouldn't suggest it's the best pattern brand to start with if you're looking for some hand holding because patterns don't really hold your hand, the instructions are fairly minimal and there is a bit of sewing knowledge required I think when you tackle these patterns. Um, but it is a lovely pattern so um, if you're not put off by that I definitely recommend it. So I'll show you the um, pattern piece again, the dress is designed to be sort of a midi length which comes down to just below your knees and I'm not usually a great fan of that length on me but actually I really like it with this pattern and it's not too fabric hungry either and um, I believe I only needed one, um, oh here we are, for size um, 14 to 18 um, for fabric which is 58 inches wide you only need um, 
1.75 meters. And then for sizes 20 to 30, again, with 58 inch wide fabric, you only need 2.25 meters of fabric. So you don't need too much fabric for this one. Um, but I'll show you my versions. So the first version I made was in this gorgeous Pima cotton fabric, which is a lovely um, kind of high quality silky cotton. And it's kind of, um, it's, it's sort of, um, a, I say, a more substantial lawn. So it's not super floaty, but not as thick as a poplin. Um, so yeah, Pima cotton lawn, really nice and substantial, and really nice and substantial for a cotton lawn. And it's this lovely sort of berry print on it. Um, and I've got, got found these really lovely um, purple buttons, which I thought matched the berries really well. So this is my version here. I said I, I love the um, neckline, this sort of this sort of um, curved top bit here, and it's all sheared at the back, which is quite hard to see. But here's the shearing, um, and yeah, it's, it's just it's a lovely one to wear in the summer. It's lovely and breezy, and I'll put a picture of, of me wearing it so you can see how it looks. If you do fancy trying this pattern out, um, I have a few recommendations and hints and tips because the instructions are quite sparse. There's an amazing blog post that's been done by Sewing Like Mad, who's on Instagram, um, and I'll put the and she's got an amazing blog where she writes in quite a lot of detail about a lot of the style like patterns, and I'll put a link to that down below. And she actually suggests putting the pattern together in a slightly different order to the style like instructions, and I followed the order she um, suggested, and she really holds your hand through it, and I thought it worked really well. So I definitely recommend checking out that blog post, but I'll link that down below. It's a really lovely um, pattern with some lovely details. Um, the bodice is fully lined, so all the seams are enclosed, which gives a really neat finish there. I would mention the pattern doesn't mention much about finishing other seams, um, so I would definitely recommend overlocking um, all the other seams to keep it nice. And also I'd recommend overlocking the pocket edges before you sew them on, um, because the pattern doesn't really mention that, and I, I wouldn't have wanted the pockets to fray too much inside, so I definitely recommend that. One other um, thing I found about the pattern order which is a bit strange is that it recommends you hemming the skirt before you've attached the skirt to the bodice. I decided to leave hemming to the end because I was worried with it being a um, shirt dress at the front that I might end up with a slightly uneven um, meat at the front so I personally chose to leave the hem to last like I generally do um, with patterns just to make sure it did all end up even at the bottom. But yeah, it's a really a lovely dress and really comfortable to wear because of the shearing. In terms of sizing, I kind of fell between the sizes four and six. And my bust kind of fell at a size six, which is um, 32 and a quarter inches. Whereas my waist fell nearer a size four, which is um, the size four waist is 25 and five eighths inches. And I decided to size down because I thought the shearing at the back would leave a bit of give. And I'm glad I did because that seems to fit nicely. And I think it might have been a little bit too roomy if I went for the larger size. So I'm glad I went for the smaller size on it because the shearing does add a nice amount of stretch. So it can take a bit of give there and a bit of ease. Um, and I, I found the shearing, this was my first time, I think, doing shearing. And I found it went really well. And what I'd really recommend is, um, when because there's quite a lot of lines there and it'll be easy to kind of um, end up going a little bit wonky by the time you got to the end of the shearing. I found marking um, in chalk um, each line I plan to shear on the fabric really helped me to make sure I kept um, straight with the shearing. So that was a little tip that I read online that I found was really useful to spend that time making each line rather than relying on the sewing machine to definitely lead it straight. But that's the Ariana sundress. I've made two versions actually, that's the first version. And I went on to make another version because I love wearing that one so much. And my second version I made in a, um, another cotton fabric. This was a bit of a lighter weight cotton fabric. It's one where um, it didn't turn out, when I bought it online, it didn't turn up exactly as I expected. And it was a bit more sheer and floaty than I expected. But it's this lovely um, stripy fabric with these lovely kind of, they kind of remind me of, a, make me think of a beach hat maybe with these blue and pink stripes. And I chose these cute pink buttons to match the pink bits. And I had a bit of fun with stripe direction here. So I um, played with the stripe direction with the patch pockets um, and then went with long stripes here. Um, and with this one, because it's such a lightweight fabric, I lined it with a plain white cotton lawn fabric just um, to make sure the stripes didn't show through at different places on the back. But yeah, I had a bit of fun with stripe matching because there are quite a lot of few pieces of the princess seams. But I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So that's my second version. I do need to wear a slip with this one because I didn't line the skirt and it is quite loose and lightweight, but that's fine to wear a slip with that. And I'll put up a couple of pictures so you can see it. And I'll also put up a picture at the back so you can see how the shearing detail looks. But yeah, it's a really lovely sew. Um, as I said, the only thing about it is the instructions are quite sparse. But if you really like the look of it and um, are a bit put off by the idea of a fairly minimal instructions, I have got a couple of other alternatives to that one that I would recommend. The first one is the Jessica dress by Mimi Giles G Style. And I actually looked at the Jessica dress when I was when I was deciding which pattern I wanted to buy. And I went for the Ariana because it's got the sheared back and I really like that feature. 
whereas the Jessica dress has a, um, it's not got a sheared back, so it's more of a fitted bodice, but it's a lovely pattern and really pretty. Um, so another one to consider if you like the look of this dress. And then more recently, Sew so Over It have released a very um, similar style button drown strappy sundress, and they released that as part of their Summer Dreaming ebook. Um, and it's yeah, called the Sienna dress, and it's a very similar actually to the Ariana dress. Um, it's got the shearing detail at the back. It's got a few different details around the gathering of the skirt, so it's a slightly different um, style, but it is very similar, so another good one to check out um, as another alternative to the Ariana dress by Stylark. But I love the Ariana dress, and um, I think with using the extra blog post, and now I've done it a couple of times, I find it quite straightforward. It's got a beautiful shape, it's really comfy to wear. So I definitely would recommend it. And I'll include the resources below I used in case you want to have a go too. My fifth favourite woven dress pattern for summer, um, I've chosen because it's a little bit quirky and it's got some really nice details. And I've got two versions I wear a lot. So it's definitely one I'd recommend for summer. And it's this pattern here. It's the Honeycomb shirt and dress by Kokoara Crafts. Um, and it's a lovely pattern because it's really an all year rounder. As you can see on the front here is a longer sleeve version. But the version um, I've made for summer is, This version here, this sleeveless version, and there's also a blouse option. So it's a, a kind of summer shirt dress with a few lovely details. It's got a button bound placket and then it's got sort of a panelled bodice. At the back it's got a yoke, which you put in using the burrito method, which is a lot of fun to give a go. It's got a little mandarin collar and it's a gathered skirt and it's got these lovely little waist ties on the side to cinch it in, which I think is a really pretty detail. So it's a lovely um, summery um, dress. As I said, you can make a wintry version too. So it's a great um, versatile pattern. And I've got loads of wear out of my two versions and I'll, I'll show you them now. So this is the first version I made and I made it in this lovely, I, I don't, I think, I'm not sure if it's a cotton lawn or a cotton poplin. It's almost somewhere in between. It's not as floaty as a lawn, but not quite as crisp and stiff as a poplin. There's this lovely cotton fabric I got from Fabric Godmother and this really bright summery floral print. Um, I don't often go for such large scale prints, but I really love this red colour, it really drew me. Um, so yeah, as I said, I made the um, sleeveless version. It's got lovely little buttons, I went these little cute wooden buttons. It's got a gathered skirt and these lovely delicate straps at the side, which cinched it in. And because it, it's got the sleeveless and it, cause it's a gathered skirt and it's quite nice and um, relaxed, it's really cool and breezy for summer. Um, and I wear this one a lot and I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like. So the sizing of the honeycomb dress, it comes in a size um, one to eight, which is the UK size six to UK 20. So the size one um, is a bust of 31 inches, waist of 23 inches and hips of 31 inches, up to a size eight, um, which is bust 44, waist 37, hips 45. So not the biggest size range, but there is some ease built into this so for size one, the finished garment measurement um, is bust 34, waist 32 and hips 43. So I actually went for the size one, even though my measurements would put me a bit larger, just because I didn't want it to be too um, big. Um, I wanted it to be fairly neat and fitted on me. And I'm really happy with that size. And I think I might have even taken in the side seams just a teensy bit more, maybe a centimetre more each side, just to bring it in a little bit and give it a more fitted look. But as I said, I'll put a picture up so you can see how that looks on me. And the recommended fabrics for this one, because it's an all year round dress, there are some winter fabrics recommended for the winter version. And then for the summer and spring version, it recommends light to medium weight fabrics like cotton, chambray linen, denim, viscose, double gauze, or cotton lawn. Personally for me, um, I actually did make one version in a viscose twill fabric, which is a more wintry version. And I'll put up a picture so you can see that one. And I didn't find it work quite as well for this dress with all the details around the panel bodice. I found the viscose was maybe a bit too drapey and didn't hold the shape as well as I'd have liked. So for me, I think I'd probably go for a less drapey fabric for this one, like a cotton or a chambray. I think that'll personally work better. And I, I'll show you my second version now. Again, this was made in a cotton cambric and I wasn't exactly sure what a cotton cambric was, but it's quite similar to a lawn. It's quite nice and light and loose. And it's an Atelier Brunette fabric. And it's really lovely. It's got these little origami sort of birds on, I think. Um, they're really pretty, I think, in this navy colour. And actually, funnily enough, I had some of these buttons left over from my other honeycomb and I thought they work really well with this version too. And this fabric's a little bit lighter and um, floatier than my other version, but it works really well too. It's just a little bit more um, sort of a, yeah, light and floaty to wear. And it's got the ties again. That's my second version. I'll put a picture up of that one too. Um, but yeah, it's a really lovely pattern with some little quirky details. 
I find the um, Kokoara instructions always to be really good. The pictures and the wording is really clear. So um, it talks you through the whole process of putting the mandarin collar in and doing the placket and doesn't make it seem too complicated at all. So it's definitely a nice um, pattern to give a go with some lovely details and perfect for all year round. I think um, a winter version would be really gorgeous in like a needle cord too, that'd be lovely. So that's the um, honeycomb dress by Kokoara Crafts. Lovely breezy shirt dress for summer. Oh, and I forgot to mention the honeycomb dress also has pockets. And I thought I'd mention that because I do love a dress with pockets. And I must admit, for a viscose or a rayon or a floaty fabric, I'm not always too keen on the pockets because I feel they drag and pull the fabric down too much. But for something like the Kokoara in a crisp kind of cotton lawn, um, it's great to have those pockets just to shovel your little bits and bobs in, particularly in summer when you don't usually have like a big bag and you're traveling quite light, it's lovely to have the pockets to pop your bits and bobs in. So those are my five favorite woven dress sewing patterns for summer. But if you'll have seen my, um, any of my five favourites vlogs before, you'll know that I often sneak in one extra pattern because I find it so hard to narrow it down to five and I want to make sure I share all of my favourites with you. So I have got a sneaky extra one in this vlog too. And it's a bit of a sneaky extra one. I think it's a bit of a wild card because it's actually a pattern by a big four pattern company. And um, if you've watched my previous vlogs before, you'll know I generally um, go for the indie patterns. And I think that's because when I started sewing, I found their instructions held your hand a bit more and made me feel a bit more comfortable when I was starting my sewing journey because I'm self-taught, I didn't take any classes. I found the indie patterns really great for their instructions and the colour photographs and all that sort of thing, so I've kind of stuck with them. But I do every now and then dip my toe into the um, big four pattern companies and they have some lovely patterns. And this is such a great one. I really wanted to include it in, as one of my favourites for summer. And it's this one here. It is the Simplicity K1355A pattern and it's just, I think the big four are great at doing um, loads of different variations and this one's no exception, there's some lovely variations on this pattern. Um, and I'll show you the line drawing so you can see all of them. So it's actually, as well as a dress, it can be made as a jumpsuit as well, so it's really flexible. It's got two main options for the top, the bodice. Um, one is kind of like a sort of strappy top with a little bit of ruching there. And then at the back, it's got this kind of crossover detail, which is really pretty, I think. And then the other version, which I particularly like, is this sort of almost halter neck version. And it's got a little channel about along the bodice top here. And it's pulled around the neck in by this um, long tie with a little bow front, which I think is really pretty and a bit of a different neckline, this halter neck. It's gathered in at the waist by elastic and you can add like a belt too. And then it's got a maxi dress option or jumpsuit option and also a little romper option. So a loads of different variations. And actually the fabrics recommended is that there's a really wide variety too. This pattern's actually recommended um, for um, both woven and stretch fabrics. So fabrics it recommends is just loads of things, including viscose, chambray, cotton, soft lightweight linen, and then also jersey and, and um, interlock. So loads of different um, options, but I think it works great with a woven fabric. And um, I'll show you my version. I've only made one version. I actually made this quite early in my dressmaking journey. I think this was actually before I started getting into the indie patterns and I just love the look of this pattern. So I made a short version, a knee length version, and then the dress version. And I used the halter neck with a tie. So it's really lovely and it pulls in here into a halter neck. And it's got some really nice details, like a bias bound um, finish to the armholes, which I think looks really smart. But I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see the details better. And I, I think it's a really nice one. I often pull out in summer and I feel really good wearing it. Um, and it's quite an easy to sew pattern. I think it's described actually, yeah, as an easy to sew pattern. Because um, it's got an elasticated waist, so it's quite easy to get on and off. And there aren't any fittings, finishes needed, like um, zips or buttons. And there aren't any darts either, because it's got quite a blousy bodice. Um, so it's quite a straightforward um, sew if you wanted to try one of the, um, one of the Big Four Pattern Company patterns. Um, yeah, and I made it in this um, it's cotton. It's quite a thick cotton. I think it might even be a quilting cotton that I got. And as I said, I made this quite early in my dressmaking journey. So I think at that point I was still really learning about fabric types. So it's probably a bit thicker than would be ideal for this pattern. But I quite like it because it shows off the structure of the dress and the details quite nicely. And it's comfy to wear. But I would love to make this year a, um, a long version in a sort of more floaty viscose fabric because I think that'd be lovely too and really cool and, and breezy for summer. Um, and I made, um, I think I made this in the size extra small. So the sizing, it goes from extra, extra small to extra, extra large. And the um, extra, extra small has a bust of 29 and a half inches, a waist of 22 inches and hips of 31 and a half inches. And it goes up to the largest size, which is bust 48 waist 41 and a half inches and hips 50 inches. And I think when I made this version, 
I had an idea that somehow the big four pattern company patterns came up large. I think I may have made um, something else and it come up quite large. So I sized down and I made an extra small, which is slightly smaller than my measurement. So I'm 32, 26, 36, which is pretty much bang on for size small, but I sized down one. And I think if I made it again, I would actually go with my actual size because I do find this pattern pretty true to size. And this version is a little bit snug on me. It's okay, but I think it will be a little bit more nice to have a little bit more room around the hips and things. So I think if I make it again, I'll size up one on it. It's a lovely pattern with some lovely variations. As I said, I really like it, the detail around the neck, and it's a bit different. I haven't seen much else out there like that. And there are loads of different options to play with. So that's the Simplicity 1355A. That's my extra pattern. And actually, um, I think if you've got a few patterns under your belt, then the pattern instructions are definitely clear enough. They just aren't um, quite as um, detailed, maybe, as you might get with the um, indie patterns. But the instructions are still very clear, so it is a great pattern to give a go. So those are my five favourite um, woven dress patterns for summer, plus one extra one I couldn't resist adding in. I've really enjoyed um, having a look through my summer dresses and picking out my favourite patterns, and I've really enjoyed sharing them with you. As I've mentioned in the vlog, I'll include details down below of particular um, blogs or websites I've mentioned. Um, and I'll also include some links to my other five favourites videos in case you fancy checking out any of those ones too. So thank you so much for joining me um, to hear about my five favourite woven patterns for summer, plus one cheeky extra. Um, I've really enjoyed talking about it. Um, if you have enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed, I would really love you to subscribe and click the bell icon so you do hear when my next vlog will be coming out. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you have fun thinking up some lovely sewing plans as summer comes nearer. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.